Hi everyone. Okay, so today we're going to start our unit on ancient Greek inventions by learning about this very simple mechanism here called the lever. Now the lever is actually one of the six simple machines um, along with wheels and pulleys and wedges and screws and inclined planes that form the building blocks of more complex machines. And so if we're going to introduce students very early to the laws of physics and applied sciences and also to the foundations of engineering, um, it's pretty smart to start with the six simple machines. We're actually only going to do one of them today. So the lever is the one that we're going to focus on. It wasn't necessarily invented by the ancient Greeks. Humans were using it far before then, but an ancient Greek philosopher named Archimedes was the first person to actually explain mathematically how levers work and how they give us an advantage when we need help moving things. And so what we wanna do first is talk about the different parts of the lever. And so we just have a simple model here made with a juice can and a ruler and a weight. Um, we just used a glue bottle for the weight. We don't wanna use something too heavy because the kids are just gonna be using their fingers to apply their force. And we don't wanna use something too light because we wanna feel the resistance. So glue bottle will work, but anything else that you can attach to the stick and make sure it stays and something that has some weight to it. Um, okay, so let's look at the different parts of the lever. Right here, we have the fulcrum. The fulcrum is what the lever is going to pivot or turn on. Okay, and the question that we're gonna ask is what happens when we move the fulcrum around? How does that affect um, the force that we need to use in order to lift something? Okay, and then we also have the two different arms of the lever. This arm right here is called the force arm or the effort arm. And that's kind of a common sense name because that is where we're going to be applying the effort or the force. Now, some of your kids might not actually know what a force is. And in physics, a force is just a push or a pull. So again, this is the force arm right here because that's where we're applying the force or the effort. Okay, now the other part of the lever is this arm right here. So it goes from the fulcrum to the actual weight or load that you're carrying. And again, the name is very common sense. It's called either the weight arm or the load arm or also the resistance arm. Okay, so again, this right here is the effort arm this right here is the weight arm or the resistance arm. Um, the question that you're gonna have the kids explore after they put together their little lever is this. Is the weight easier to move when the effort arm is longer, shorter, or the same length as the resistance arm? And the only way they're gonna be able to answer that is to actually try it out for themselves. So again, the question is, is the weight easier to move when the effort arm is longer shorter or the same length as the resistance arm. And uh, they could just go ahead and start playing and seeing for themselves. And so you wanna tell them they're just gonna use one finger. Um, they can use two, that's fine, but whatever they use, they have to use the same finger every single time. And we'll start with the fulcrum in the middle. So because we're using a ruler, it's really easy to see, it's six inches, it's in the middle. And we want them to feel just with their finger how much force it takes them to move their weight. Um, you could also say lift the weight. It might be easier for them to conceptualize that. So how much force does it take for them to lift the weight? And again, we're not using a spring scale or any kind of formal measurement. It's just how they feel. And they just have to do it a few times. Okay, so about a medium amount of force that we're using. It's not too hard, not too easy. Um, but what if we made the force arm or the effort arm a little bit shorter? So we move the fulcrum closer to this end. Okay, so now the force arm is really, really short. What's the difference in the amount of force that we have to apply? And already you kind of feel it, the tension in your fingers. It takes a lot more force here to lift this glue stick than it did when the fulcrum 
was in the middle and the arms were of equal length. Okay, and again, we're not using a scale. They're just having to feel it in their fingers. So it's a little harder. They have to push down a little bit harder to lift the weight when the force arm is shorter. Okay, so have them test the middle again so they see. It definitely is a little bit harder. Now, what happens when the force arm is really, really long as compared to the weight arm? So we're gonna go to the other end. Okay, and again, they're going to push their finger down and apply that force. And they will see that it's definitely easier to lift that weight when you have the longer force arm. So again, the force arm is a lot longer than the actual weight arm. And when that happens, it's a lot easier to lift the object. Okay, so they have their conclusion there. And that's the first part. And so again, you ask the question again, is the weight easier to move when the effort arm is longer, shorter, or the same length as the resistance arm? And the answer is longer. So the longer the force arm, the easier it is to move or lift the weight. And that's just one of the questions that we're gonna ask. The second question is, what if it's not just lifting the object? What if you actually wanna fling it far away? And this is kind of leading them into the next activity, which is to build a catapult. So what if our goal wasn't just to lift the glue bottle off the ground? What if the goal was to actually fling it really far? Where would you wanna put the fulcrum? Would you want it to have the lever to have a long force arm or a short force arm? And how do you know? Okay, so we haven't built the catapult yet. We're just gonna play with our lever model. How would you know how to build the lever for your catapult, just using this and just making observations. So again, they have to look. Okay, we're not just lifting the weight, we actually wanna fling it really far. What would it look like if we applied our force here? How far would the glue go? Um, and you can also talk about, in terms of the force that you're applying, you're actually gonna probably hit it really hard Okay, so if you're hitting it really far or hard on this end, how far would the glue go versus putting the fulcrum in the middle, hitting it really hard, how far do they think the glue would go? I mean, we're still leaving it attached, but they could kind of, you could kind of tell just by looking at it, how far it would go here versus how far it would go here, right? So how do they know? It looks like the higher the weight moves, it seems like that means the farther it's going to fly or fling. And I can move it to the other end right here. So we have a really long force arm. And remember we thought, oh, a really long force arm is gonna make it easier for us to lift the weight. And that's true. But if the goal is to actually move the weight really far or fling it really far, it's a different thing. It probably is not going to fly that far, right? If we put the fulcrum right here. So in terms of what you're trying to do, whatever kind of movement you're trying to achieve, the length of the force arm is going to be different. So again, just to lift the weight, we want a really long force arm because it takes us less force to move it. But if we wanna fling the weight really far, like in a catapult, and we're gonna, we know that we're gonna be applying a really strong force, we want a really short force arm because we could see that the, the glue is gonna fly a lot farther, okay? And again, they're seeing this and feeling it for themselves just by playing with this really simple model. And the next thing we're gonna do is put their observations into action as they build their first catapult. Okay, and that will be the next video.